All right, today we have a Wells Gardner K4900, and this has had a cap kit done, and it's very clean, but otherwise not much else. Uh, giving it a good look over, there's a lot of bad solder joints, and I think that may be the cause of the problem as to why this was sent in. If we look at what this says, it says monitor dims in and out at random times. Happens with multiple PCBs. Please change anything you recommend. So based off of that, I took a, a look at the solder side of the board, and if we zoom in, the most common issue that plagues these 4900s is present on this chassis along with a couple of other things, but let's look at what I'm talking about right here. Okay, right here. Uh, actually, you know what, let's go back a bit. So here is our power supply section. And you can see this white line here separates the entire power supply section from the entire rest of the chassis. And the only thing that connects the power output from the B plus and the voltage regulator and everything to the rest of the chassis is this jumper right here. That's it. So if we look right here at this jumper, we can see that the solder joint is cracked all around here. This is the most common issue with these 4900s. Can we get a, that's a good, a good view there. You can see that it's just cracked around here. The whole thing has a crack on it. So what's happening is that as the B plus regulation tr attempts to keep the B plus steady, whenever a, uh, the screen changes or brightness changes or things like that, it's not able to pass the full current across here because that solder joint is cracked. So I'm 99.9999999999% sure the problem of the monitor dimming in and out is caused by this cracked solder joint. Something else I noticed is right here, it's very common for solder joints in this vertical output section to have bad, well, to be cracked or bad because there's a very high heat going on over here. But what I see here is that this solder joint is basically broken. Now, I don't know if this happened in shipping or what, but that resistor there got pushed down and it popped this solder joint off. And I don't know if we can get any closer than that, but you can see that it's bent like that. And if I take this and just kind of lift it back up again, uh, I don't think it was even ever connected. It might have been, but just barely. So we have to reflow that and we have to reflow this. Uh, you can really see it a little bit better there now, how cracked that is. So that's the only thing that really leapt out at me. Uh, but with the symptom of this being uh, dimming in and out, I am very confident that it is this is our problem. I don't know if this happened in shipping or what's going on with that. But if we give this a good look over here, um, I didn't see anything else that really made me wonder what's going on here. There's a lot of carnage kind of going on here. I don't know what's all up with this. Uh, the flyback could use a good reflow, but it all, the, the joints all look okay for what they are. Uh, let's take another look. The uh, video header pins could use a reflow because uh, they're, none of them are cracked, but there's a couple that are pretty thin. Uh, R503 has not been reflowed. I always like to reflow R503, this guy here, because these can get pretty brittle as well in the power supply. But um, yeah, there's really not much else that I noticed that we that is immediately worrisome. We need to reflow the horizontal uh, width coil. I mean, I need to go through and do a, a really good inspection and a good, really good reflow, but I think I'm very confident that our problem is definitely this cracked joint on this jumper. Because if I take this jumper out of the circuit, if I disconnect that jumper right there and lift that out of circuit, I can do the light bulb test and verify the power supply section is good. And we can test B plus and all that, but there's not really a reason to because it does work, but it dims in and out. And I, I'm absolutely confident that it's because of that cracked solder joint. So let's reflow that. Uh, let's Before we do anything, let's reflow this and then reflow this. And then I want to test it and see if we can duplicate it. I, there's no reason to even bother trying to do it now because I don't even want to power it up with this cracked joint and this being broken like that. So let's reflow those two joints. Then let's do an actual uh, boot up test here and see if we can duplicate the problem. If not, then uh, I'll consider this the solution to the issue. Then I'll go, do th go through and do a full reflow, do some more testing, but this should be a very quick and easy, uh, a very quick and easy fix in a, a very quick video. So. Uh, that being said, yeah, those aren't touching. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, hit this real quick and then uh, we'll test it out. All right. 
right, and let's get this one too. And let's see if we can re-solder this on here. I think the pad is gone. So let's put a little more on here. That sh there we go. That should work pretty well there. That is pretty good. I think that'll do just nicely. Well, okay. <laughs> let's get it on a tube and power it up. I do see that we have an issue here with the filter cap is see this filter cap that's not good I don't like that at all so I'm going to fix that I'm going to remove it and put the hole the the pin, the pin through the hole or the leg through the hole and use the uh, fiberglass pin to scratch away the solder mask and we'll secure this properly so this doesn't wobble around uh, out here in no man's land so all right so for now let's get a tube and hook this up and see what we get Oh, the uh, pots here on the neck are a bit bent up, but they're otherwise intact. Common for this kind of thing to happen in shipping, but uh, I'm not going to adjust any of the colors because they're all adjusted for the tube that this came off of, but I want to straighten those up a bit. Uh, That's kind of wonky. But I mean, if if it works, it works, but I don't really like that. I'll see if I can find something that might work better. If not, I mean, I recommend, uh, I'd recommend just cutting the wire and taking this pin out and just soldering it directly to the board. Um, because you can't, you have to unsolder the focus wire and these wires here well I guess you can disconnect it from the board but you gotta desolder the focus wire anyway to phys physically completely remove the neck board from the chassis anyway so I think I'll, I'll probably just cut this uh, thing off of here and solder it directly to the board and then I'll give the pin back to the owner if he wants to put it back this way he can but I don't like this really much at all so let's uh, all right. Well, for the way it is now, let's just test it and see what it's doing. And if we can, if we can verify the discrepancy, if we can't verify the discrepancy, I'm pretty sure that reflow in that solder joint fixed the problem. So let's get on a tube and test it here and see what we get. Okay, we're all hooked up, ready to go. We got anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and there's no remote board. The pots are attached, so we're ready to turn it on and make sure a it works, and then b what we'll do is if it does work and looks fairly decent after some quick adjustments, if need be. We'll set it up on the tripod and turn the light out and let it run for about five minutes or so and verify that uh, we don't have any flickering brightness or random brightness or uh, image dimming in and out, things like that. So let's go ahead and turn it on and make sure it works and then kind of go from there. So one, two, three. Okay, it does come on and... Man, we don't have any video, any image. What's going on here? Uh, turn up our brightness. Let me set the camera on the tripod here. And zoom in a bit. Okay, how come we don't have any? Do we have any neck glow? We have neck glow. Ah, oh, there we go. It was flyback was turned down. Okay. I didn't do that. That's odd. Vertical hold. Uh, spin this around here. Vertical hold is this guy. Dunk. Okay. CMOS invalid. Yeah, what, whatever. Well, I need some convergence work on this monitor. Ugh. God, that looks terrible. Well, it's way too blue. But like I say, I'm not going to mess with the colors. So far, I don't see anything. It looks pretty darn stable to me. 
Yeah, it's way too blue. I may turn the blue down and then turn it back up because that looks pretty bad. Uh, blue is the far one. Ooh. Okay, some quick adjustments and... Not looking too bad. Let's adjust some focus. It's still a bit too blue, but that's better. Focus. Uh, ah, that looks pretty good. Uh, we got some uh, degaussing issues here. Let's uh, just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. Just for the hell of it, let's do some quick degaussing. Now, disclaimer. Never ever do what I'm about to do. We're too bright still. Well, that's better. Okay, that looks pretty good. Never ever 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 do what I'm about to do. All right, so I got a speaker here with a magnet on it. Old pinball speaker, and we're gonna see if we can degauss this here. We're just gonna wipe. We're gonna wipe the screen with the, the magnet here. Yeah, that worked out fairly well. A little bit of green there. Not too bad. Oh, that board reset. You, That's why this is a test board, because the darn thing likes to reset on me. But hey, uh, no, we're still got some... Let me go back to the blue screen here. Hang on. So far, so good. It's not uh, random brightness, random dimming for me. Uh, well, you can see this used to be a championship sprint. <laughs> the tube, anyway, <laughs> looked pretty obvious. Um, yeah, there's still a bit of green. Ah, there we go. I think that's pretty good. And all it takes is a little speaker with a decent sized magnet, and you wipe it across the screen like that. Uh, sometimes you got to do it this way, and other times you got to do it this way, depending on if it's blue or green. But there's a very, there's a very. Uh, now that corner is a bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. It's a very, um, how do I phrase this? It takes practice. Of course, I, the reason I say never, ever, ever do this, because you can damage the mask by getting a magnet that's too strong. So you don't want to get too close, and you want to know what you're doing. But in a pinch, like my degaussing uh, coil is actually at the arcade, so I don't have it with me. So in a quick, in a quick pinch, you can use a, a speaker like that. It's okay. Ah, oh, you stupid board. What are you doing? And no, it's not a voltage problem. There's, I need to reseat the PLCC chips or something, but look at that. That looks pretty darn good. Ah, I must say that looks pretty good. Yes. Hello. <laughs> wow, amazing. So, uh, yeah, I think we have absolutely solved the problem. I think that uh, it was a bad, so bad cracked solder joint on that um, B-plus jumper. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to call that success. I'm going to let this run for a couple of hours just to make sure and keep monitoring it. But I think what we'll do is I'm going to set the camera up here, let it run for about five minutes, and then fast forward the footage. And then we can verify that it's not dimming or going in and, in and out of brightness or focus drifting or anything. And... And uh, we'll set this up, let it run for about five minutes, and if it runs fine without doing, let's see, to a quote, the person exactly, monitor dims in and out at random times. Well, I think uh, we've got that licked. So I'm going to set this up for five minutes, let it run on a, let it run on a time lapse, maybe even ten minutes. Let it run on a time lapse, turn the light out, and we'll make sure that we don't get any random dimming or uh, dimming in and out or at random times, quote unquote. So, all right, here we go.
Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and I gotta say that uh, I've been watching it, and it has not dimmed or blinked out or done anything at all in any way, shape, or form. I am 100% positive that that bad solder joint on the jumper from the B Plus was the problem. So now I'm going to do a full reflow and a better inspection. There's a couple of things that I noticed that will show off here, and then uh, we'll do one more test and call it good. So let's see what else I found here. Well, now that we're back on the bench here, let's go over a couple of things. So the ground wire that's coming off the neck board is uh, all frayed and broken. So we'll have to fix that. If you look here, this is frayed and broken. So we'll have to fix that. Then it's also spliced in with the ground that's coming off the frame here that is soldered on. And then we have all this stuff here that's not even covered. Not that it matters, it needs to ground anyway, but if it grounded to something on the neck board with power, that'd be bad. So this needs to be covered up and fixed. Uh, then we have the G2 wire. I noticed when I was hooking the chassis up, the G2 wire is actually exposed. I don't know if I can, how I'm going to show this, but see the G2 wire is actually exposed, so we need to fix that as well. So a lot of things need to be taken care of here, so I'm going to get all that done, as well as the actual complete reflow. Then I'll come back and show it, and then I'll do a, one final test, probably off camera, but uh, and then call it good. So it looks like uh, some caps were changed, but not all of them. I do need to replace or fix this, but um, like for some reason they didn't change this cap, and they didn't change this cap. These, this cap here and this cap here are absolutely 100% original, so I'm going to swap those out for new ones. Um, I don't know why they didn't replace those. Yep, absolutely solderist original there, and no one's touched that one, so yeah, that's odd. So I gotta change those two caps, fix this here, and I'll show that afterward. Uh, get all this other stuff done. I gotta take the G2 wire and solder it right to the, the neck board, because this could fall off, and who knows what could happen at that point. Um, so I gotta get all this done. When I come back, I'll have it all finished, and uh, I'll show you what I did. And then uh, at that point, yeah, as a matter of fact, look at this. Now that I look at it, this cap's original, and this cap's original, this cap's original, huh. Well, I'm going to go through, this cap's original, wow. Why would you just do a partial cap kit? That's odd. Let me go through and change all the caps that weren't changed, fix this, fix the wiring problems, um, and all that. So I'll come back, show all that off, and then we'll call it done. Yeah, we'll call that done. Well, the rework is now complete. Uh, I got all of the caps that weren't replaced replaced, and all the ones here that have the the Sharpie on them as the ones I changed out that were original still. So there was one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five. There were five caps I found that were absolutely original. They were the old Elna caps, and Elna no longer is around as far as I know. Uh, so I got all the caps changed that weren't. I got the filter cap fixed. Uh, it's no longer all wobbly and wavy. It's nice and secure, as you see. And what I did was is scrape the solder mask away and solder direct directly to the board there, so it's nice and secure. And then I also went through and reflowed all the normal problem areas. I hit all the vertical output area, the two uh, vertical ICs. Our transistors are really what they are. Uh, we got the video header pins, uh, reflowed the flyback. We got anything and everything that needed reflowed, R503. Uh, any of the little little Q, uh, Q transistors here, all these transistors have tendency to have some cracked legs. Got those done. Uh, there was one more jumper here in the power supply that I hit because I didn't hit it previously. It was okay, but I didn't hit it previously, so we got that. Uh, yeah, anything and everything that even looked like it remotely needed reflowed has been reflowed. So we should be good. I need to clean everything up still, uh, but that's not a big deal. So yeah, I got that uh, completed. And then as far as the wiring on the neck board, I got the I got a uh, heat shrink put over that exposed part of the G2 wire, and then I removed the pin from the neck board that had the iffy connection, and just soldered the G2 wire right through the hole to the back side of the board. Uh, let's put this back where I got it, okay? And then we got all this, uh, 
I added some flux and soldered up all this connection here so it's not frayed and it's beefier now so it won't bend around and, and uh, fray out. And then also we tied it to the focus wire here for an extra layer of uh, strain relief so it won't break off. So that should stay nice and secure as well. Um, what else? Oh, the ground wire here that was all kind of tied together. I uh, removed the wires and put some heat shrink over it and re-shrunk it and hook it all back together. So now there won't be exposed grounds there. Not that it was a big deal, but, the, but it needed to be addressed. So I think that's about it. Um, I may have forgot to mention some things because it's been about an hour or so, but I think we are good enough to call this complete. So let's get it hooked up one, one more time, do one final last test. I'll let it run for a few hours to make sure nothing else goes wrong. But I am confident that we have this problem licked. So, all right, let's do that. Let's get the tube, get it hooked up, and give it one last test. Okay, all hooked back up. Let's give it one final test. And if it works, I'm confident in uh, having this, giving it my blessing and sending it back to the owner. So one, two, three. There we go. Obviously we saw that was a championship sprint tube and uh, the reason it got swapped into this frame uh, because I swapped the tube that used to be in this frame into my APB, which had this championship sprint tube in it, which was weak, so I did a tube swap and a yoke swap, and now we have this, which is, uh, I rejuvenated it, ready to go, and it's good to go, so that's the idea behind why it took so long, but uh, yeah, awesome. So I think we are good. I'll give this my blessing, and I will send it back to the owner. He should be happy, and uh, yeah, so there we go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.